Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And if the facts on this list tell us anything, it's that we do not want any of this stuff to repeat. What are some of the strangest, grossest, creepiest historical facts you learnt after you were in school? I'm your host James and these are the top 10 disturbing historical facts you were never taught about in school. And we're kicking off this list with the attack of the dead men. Now I learned about this from a song by Sabaton, awesome band, definitely check them out. But it's based on a real life battle that took place between the Germans and the Russians in World War I. On August 6, 1915, the Germans had unleashed a barrage of poison gases on the enemy before beginning their advance. They didn't think they were going to come up against much resistance if any at all, but they were wrong. From the smoke and ashes came several Russian survivors. They were coughing up blood and bits of their own lungs. Their skin had begun to decay. They looked like reanimated corpses. And the Germans immediately turned around and just booked it back where they came. They were so frightened that some of them became entangled in their own barbed wire traps. And the Russians started opening fire on the fleeing soldiers. World War I just sounded like literal hell on earth. And the Germans on that that day probably thought they were actually seeing the dead come to life. Pretty horrifying. Number 9. Destinies of the Soul I thought uh, it was only evil books like the legendary Necronomicon that were supposedly bound in human flesh. But it turns out that this was a more common practice than you might think. Destinies of the Soul, published at some point in the 1880s, is just one of the many books that were bound in human skin back in the good old days. And where does this book sit now? Harvard. It's been there since some point in the 1930s. Bound with human skin by Dr. Boland, who wrote on the inside stating, This book is bound in human skin parchment on which no ornament has been stamped to preserve its elegance. By looking carefully, you easily distinguish the pores of the skin. A book about the human soul deserved to have a human covering. I kept this piece of human skin taken from the back of a woman. It is interesting to see the different aspects that change this skin according to the method of preparation to which it is subjected. The practice of binding books this way, it was known as something I can't pronounce. Look it up there. Maybe we'll just write it. I'm not going to bother. It's going to take hours. Uh, anyway, it dates back to the 16th century. Next up we have the Champawat Tiger. In the late 19th to early 20th century, this tigress was responsible for the deaths of an estimated 436 people in Nepal and the Kalman area of India. And that's a single handedly, mind you. This tiger was basically the real life version of Sher Khan. At the time her natural habitat was being destroyed to make way for farmland and timber and many of its natural food sources were being hunted by humans in large numbers. So food was a bit scarce and in response the tiger decided to just uh, eat humans and it did. Now tigers don't often hunt down humans and eat them but in this case uh, she didn't really have much choice. In 1907 the rogue tiger was finally shot by Jim Corbett, an Indian born British hunter and tracker. This tiger wasn't the only one he hunted down either. He was a colonel in the British Indian Army and was often called upon to track and slay man-eating tigers and leopards. But none were as tough as the Champawat Tiger who holds the record for the highest human death toll of any single animal. Next up on the list is Terreri. Ter Terreri. He was a guy from France in the late 1700s who became famous or infamous for his super disturbing eating habits. He had this crazy appetite and would eat tons of food, even live animals. He'd, he'd gobble down a whole bunch of apples, a meal meant for like for 15 people. He'd even take to devouring cats and dogs. Terari uh, didn't stop at regular food though. He once ate a live eel whole and even swallowed a snake after taking off its skin. Doctors and curious people began taking note of him trying to figure out like why he ate like he did. They thought something might be wrong with his stomach that made him feel full or and, and just never gain weight. At one point he was hospitalized and his disturbing behavior just got worse. He was once found eating parts of corpses and drinking human blood. The mystery was never completely solved and he eventually passed away when he was 26. And at number 6 we have Ancient Teeth Whitener. Now this one's just kind of gross but if you're looking to whiten your teeth and you're on a budget, could be worth a try. Just don't say I recommended it because I am not. So uh, the Romans used to use urine to whiten their teeth. Uh, they dilute it with water or goat's milk and uh, I don't know, I guess wish it around like mouthwash. The thing, 
it's just, it, it's as nasty as it sounds. It, it did apparently work. There is ammonia in urine which acts as a cleansing agent. You can find ammonia in cleaning products like glass cleaner for example nowadays. Now I'm not sure what they would have done about their breath. Not much point in having pearly white teeth if you smell like number one. I also, it's kind of weird to think that if you saw someone back then with a nice set of exceptionally bright white teeth in their mouth, you'd think like, man, that dude swishes a lot of pee. Were people like grossed out back then too? Were they like, oh, here we go, here we go again. Gotta whiten these teeth. Things I do for these chompas. Or were they just really casual about it? I'm starting to realize why this fact wasn't brought up in school. First of all, you'd never be able to get the class under control. You know, some kid would try it as a dare. The parents would be like, what are you teaching our kids? It would be a whole thing. Number five, the headless chicken. This whole incident began in 1945 in Colorado. A farmer named Lloyd Olson tried to lob off the head of one of his chickens because it was time for dinner and his wife was going to prepare a meal for his mother-in-law. Most of the head came off, but he missed the jugular and most of its brain stem was still intact. He attempted to prep the chicken for dinner, but it was still alive. So instead of trying again, he decided to just take care of it. He used an eyedropper to give it water and would feed it small bits of corn and grains. But this day would change the course of both the Olsen family and the chicken forever, as this headless bird would soon skyrocket to fame, becoming known as Mike the Headless Chicken. Together they toured the US with Mike being showcased in freak shows and circus sideshows, which I think are pretty much the same thing. He was photographed for magazines. Everyone wanted to meet Mike the Headless Chicken. Chicks wanted his autograph. He was a sensation for 18 whole months before finally dying in 1947. The Blood Eagle. So this was a form of punishment carried out by Vikings and it's pretty brutal. The Blood Eagle was a practice used on particularly bad enemies, traitors, or those who were deemed dishonorable. The recipient of this lovely procedure was restrained laying face down on the ground. On their back they would have the image of an eagle with its wings spread out carved into them. Then the victim's ribs were separated from the spine and kind of splayed out so in the end they'd almost have this appearance of wings coming out of their back. And finally the lungs would be pulled out and like splayed over the ribs which would kind of flutter in the wind like the wings of a majestic eagle. What a, what a cool party trick. Sounds like a fun time to be alive. Next on the list we have the tapeworm diet. This was a bizarre weight loss method popular in the early 20th century which involved intentionally ingesting a tapeworm in the hopes of shedding weight. Uh, advertisements claim that the tapeworms would consume a portion of the food in the digestive tract leading to weight loss without altering one's eating habits. Some people looking to lose weight could purchase tapeworm cysts usually in the form of a pill from dubious sources. Once ingested the tapeworms would grow and absorb nutrients from the host's food. As they matured, the tapeworms would reach several feet in length. Weight loss was just a side effect of malnutrition and the body's like struggle to absorb nutrients effectively due to, you know, having a tapeworm in their stomach. This was obviously incredibly dangerous. There were complications including abdominal pain and worse stuff. In some cases, of course, life-threatening conditions if the parasites migrated to other parts of the body especially. And the tapeworms couldn't really be controlled or like selectively removed once inside the body. And eventually, medical professionals stepped in and began to denounce the tapeworm diet as very risky and ineffective. And eventually, the sale of tapeworm products uh, started to decline, thankfully. Number two, buried alive. Now, this is one a lot of you may know about already, but people used to get buried alive a lot and not always on purpose. The, this macabre occurrence stemmed from a lack of medical understanding and limited technology. The 18th century saw a, especially a rise in cases of mistaken death due to various factors like certain illnesses, accidents, comas especially. Medical professionals of the era really struggled to accurately determine whether someone was actually dead or not, leading to premature burials. Graveyards became the uh, unintended scenes of horror as unfortunate folks were laid to rest before they were actually dead. The fear of being buried alive was a very real concern in society at that time, which led to the invention of various safety measures to prevent people from dying in their graves, which is an odd sentence to say. Some coffins were fitted with bells or strings attached to the deceased's 
finger, which would be pulled from above ground in case they woke up. Then hopefully a grave digger would hear the bell and race over to uh, dig the person out. And coming in at number one, we have mummy medicine. Mummy medicine was a practiced for hundreds of years and involved using ground up mummy remains in medical remedies. Uh, European apothecaries believed that powdered mummy could cure various ailments due to its perceived mystical and restorative properties. The main source of these mummies was of course Egypt where preserved corpses were plentiful due to natural dehydration in the uh, dry climates. Mummies were ground into powder and added to medical concoctions believed to treat conditions ranging from epilepsy, stomach disorders, and the demand for mummies was so high that sometimes led to the deliberate plundering of ancient Egyptian tombs. And despite this widespread use, mummy medicine lacked any real scientific basis and over time as medical understanding improved, the practice fell out of favor. With all that said, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.